what's up guys so right now me and my sister were driving back home and we were just talking about like how different it would be if our mother was like American so like if she was born here and we were raised like with American culture because we were like talking about how there's like very different ways in that um, in ways that like American children are raised and the way that like first generation kids are raised and so we were talking about like how different it would be if we were Hispanic if we were like second generation Hispanic or whatever if our mom was like born here um, and we were like saying like you know what but if we were like raised like American then there would be a lot of cultural things that we wouldn't have that we grew up with and that we love about being Hispanic so I just wanted to make a video about Hispanic struggles or things that every Hispanic does whatever I don't I'm not really sure what I'm gonna title this I'm kind of making the video on the as we speak I literally just got home and was like I'm just gonna record so I'm just gonna say this is Hispanic struggles so the first thing as soon as I walked into my house that I realized about being Hispanic is that everyone has the same paintings from the swap meet in their houses and I love this because I'll go into someone else's house that's Hispanic and I feel like I'm at home because everyone has the same painting if you're white and you're watching this and you're like, what are you talking about? Well, let me show you. So that river painting that you saw, that everyone has like a variation of that painting. I see that painting everywhere. It's like ridiculous the amount of times that I see that painting. And the same thing with the fruit one and the Last Supper. You're guaranteed to have a Last Supper house in a Catholic home. Most Hispanics, especially with their first generations, are very Catholic. My family's not Catholic so we don't have that painting but I went to Lupita's house and she had, her family's very Catholic, and she had the painting and it's just something that it's very common to a Hispanic household. Next thing that I've noticed that a bunch that's like very Hispanic is um, the cure to everything when you're sick is soup and vipa poru. And you're like, what are you saying, Stephanie? Stephanie, whoa, that was weird. Okay, what am I saying? I'm saying Vicks. You know Vicks vapor rub. You know how it's spelled, like Vicks. You know what I'm talking about, right? Vicks vapor rub. Well. I don't know if just my mom says it this way, but it is a cure to like every Hispanic household. But the way my mom says it is Vic Vaporub. Like Vic Vapor like she's saying it, it's like she's been she's seeing the word, but she's saying it in Spanish. And it's, I think it's the cutest thing ever. And I didn't realize for the longest time that it was called Vic's Vapor Rub. I thought everyone knew it as Vic Vic's Vaporub. I can't even say it now. <laughs> but um but yeah, so that is something that is a cure to everything. Like, I'm sick, well, let's get some Vicks. Um, and chicken soup. And you know what's funny about chicken soup, too, is that my mom will always make soup when it's freaking hot. Like, she doesn't, it's not like winter time and it's like, mm, I want some soup, like, that'll be very great, it'll be warmy. No, it is like 101 degrees and my mom will be like, you know what I'm craving? I'm craving soup. Like, the last thing I want to eat is a hot soup in the summer, but she's like, I'm missing home right now, and I want soup. So we get soup. Third thing that cures everything is aloe vera. I don't, I don't know how you say that in English. Aloe vera? Mom? Oh, good, baby. It's August. Yes. It's really hot. Why did air you, conditioner on. Why did you decide to make chicken soup? Because I grew up with chicken soup, and I like to have chicken soup. Uh, available, so sometimes I get tired of uh, of dry food. Mom, what's the cure to everything? If I were to get sick right now, what would you give me? And if I had like a cough, what would you give me? In Latin, uh, big paparu helps a lot with the cough. We rub it in your chest, we rub it in your feet, and we put it on your forehead. What else? And maybe even a tiny little here, just so you can breathe that fresh mint and can help you breathe a little bit. So. What else? What else? Big paparu. Big paparu. Um, <laughs> Mix vapor rub. Chicken, chicken, chicken soup. Um, Give what you else? a Tylenol. Oh, no, you're missing something. I'm missing something. Oh, aloe vera. <laughs> aloe vera. Another thing I've noticed is that a lot of houses 
that are Hispanic don't have real trash cans. They have like plastic bags that are hanging from like a door handle thing and that's the trash. Like they don't... I I've never understood it. Like why not just buy a trash can? Another thing that Hispanics do that I don't see anyone else do this is that <laughs> when you open a jub, like a <laughs> jub, uh, what should we call it? When you open a container of butter or sour cream, nine times out of ten, there's not actually sour cream or butter in this. And if you're white and you're watching this, you're probably like, what do you mean there's not butter in your butter container? What I mean is that we are poor people. So when we finish the butter, we clean out the tub and we use it as a Tupperware. Because we are poor people. So when you <laughs> when you open up containers in the refrigerator, it's most likely not what it says. So you have to look inside before you start like thinking that you have butter and then you're halfway through the mashed potatoes and you're like, wait, we don't actually have butter, we have beans. Another thing that most Hispanic households have are these blankets. They're these thick blankets and they usually have like a tiger or something on it, but they're, the, they're these specific blankets and why people don't understand these because this is totally a Hispanic thing. I mean, my mom used to sell these and she did great because people love these blankets. Um, Lupita still has these, and, but they're like, um, everyone like puts them under their bed covers because they're nice and warm. They're, they're really comfortable, they're nice. But they're, they're such a Hispanic thing. They're so Hispanic. Um, another thing is that we don't call lemons limes. <laughs> what I mean by that is that if I have a lime, we don't call it a lime. We call it a green lemon. And if you want the yellow one, you have a yellow lemon. Most of the time we use limes, but we just... In Spanish, we say limon. Like, it, like if I say limon to my mom, it's a lime. But, yeah, because most of the time, we don't really care if it's an actual lemon. Because we use, like, those little... We use, like, lines for, like, tacos and stuff. I mean, unless you're making lemonade, then you know it's the yellow one. Um, but, yeah, we just say limon. If I say limon, like, it's a lime. And if I want to be specific, then it's limon verde or limon amarillo, like the green lemon or the yellow lemon. But like, I've, there's no word for lime. So to me, everything's a lemon. And my stepdad had a fit about this when I'd be like, can I have a lemon? And he'd be like, and he'd be like, we don't have any lemons. I'm like, yeah, you do. It's like right there. Like, and he's like, that's a lime. And I'm like, okay, same thing. And he like was like, no, they're not the same thing. They taste very different. And I'm like, yeah, sure, they taste very different. But in Spanish, they're like the same thing. It really doesn't matter to us. Mom, what do you call this? A lemon, limon. Right? Because in Spanish, we only say lemon. Yeah, like Green limon. lemon or yellow lemon? Correct. We don't well, say lime or lemon. Only white people say lime. Correct. Right, That's very racist, okay? It's true. You're the only... Growing up Hispanic meant that I said a lot of things incorrectly. My mom learned English along with me. We both learned English on our own. We had to figure it out to communicate with people. And we ended up saying things wrong because we read them phonetically or, you know, English is weird. I don't understand why things aren't phonetic, but whatever. So we say a lot of things wrong. And to this day, I still say a lot of things wrong. For example, I say cream cheese. Maybe I said that right. I don't even know. I don't even know if I said that wrong, but whatever. I say cream cheese because you know what? In Spanish, it's backwards of what English will say. So I grew up saying things backwards because it makes sense in Spanish. And then people laugh at me and I'm like, homeboy. No. Spanish is my first language. Do not judge. Do you speak two languages? No. Okay, do not judge me. I don't make fun of your Spanish when you try to speak it. And then. And then another thing that I grew up saying incorrectly was, um, my mom, this is my favorite, this is my favorite, my mom used to call buffalo wings, buffalo weenies, <laughs> and everyone just accepted it when I said it, I was like, well I want buffalo weenies, <laughs> and, and then, um, there was this white man in El Salvador, I don't know why he was in El Salvador, but I was at Pizza in El Salvador, and I was like, oh, can I have some buffalo weenies? And he was like, well, he was like sitting with me next to me, and I was like, oh, I want buffalo weenies or something. And he was like, buffalo wings? And I was like, oh, that's how you say it? Oh, 
well, that makes that makes a lot more sense. Thanks, mom. And I even said my middle name long wrong for incorrectly for so long. So my mom always said Stephanie Lean, like a Stephanie Lean, because that's just how you say it with a Spanish accent. Accent. Um, and so I literally thought that my middle name was Lean, like like Lean, like Lean, like a cholo. Like I that's what I thought my middle name was. And so kids at school would be like, Oh, Stephanie, what's your middle name? I'd be like, Oh, Lean, and they're like. Lean? Are you sure it's not Lynn? And I'm like, no, it's not Lynn. And they're like, ha, you have an Asian middle name. And I was like, no, I don't. My middle name is Lynn. It's not Lynn. By the way, it's not even spelled Asian. I'm named after a Jewish woman. Um, but um, so I thought my middle name was Lean. And then I went to, you know, do you guys remember Lynn and Mark Eggerman from my video from Thanksgiving with the Eggermans? But anyways, I'm named after Lynn Eggerman and so I was finding like, Lynn, how do you say your name? And she was like, Lynn. And I was like, the kids at school have been right about my name all along. Something right off the back that I can think of that American children do that first generation Hispanics don't, don't do is that like white kids can like just mouth off to their parents. Or like, pull the whole, I'm 18, I can do what I want kind of thing. Like, that does not fly in our culture. It just does not. It doesn't matter if you're 30 or 20. If you're living under your mother's roof, you do what your mom says. And you best believe you're going to obey. Because otherwise, you're going to get whipped by the bell. And it's just, it's just something we don't do, like, that just, that doesn't fly in our culture. You can't just be like, oh, well, I'm 18, I can get a tattoo because it's legal. Like, no, no, if your mom said no, you must believe you're not gonna get a tattoo because otherwise you're gonna get killed. Hi, mommy. You wanna join my video? Huh? You wanna join my video? Join your video? Come sit down here. Hi, mom. If I were to tell you, if I were to tell you, mom, I would get a tattoo, what would you say? No. <laughs> right? And what would happen if I disobeyed you? Oh, I'll dishonor you. <laughs> I've had so many white friends that I've said like, oh, my parents let me do what I want. And I'm just like, uh, no, my mom does not fly by that. If she says to be home at this time, oh, you best believe I'm home at that time because it's not pretty if I do not. Obey! It's not pretty! You don't cross mama, it don't happen! But overall, I love being Hispanic. And I wouldn't trade it for the world because if I were to give up being Hispanic, then I wouldn't have great food or the fun puzzle of mystery inside of a sour cream tub. I wouldn't feel at home in a stranger's home because they don't have that same painting that I have. Just love Hispanic people. The second that I walk into a Hispanic person's house, I get offered food. We're very welcoming when you come into our house. We literally mi casa, we literally mean mi casa es tu casa. Like we mean it. And we will treat you as if you were one of us. And I love that about my culture and I would never ever change that. So even though, yeah, there's the downfalls of being racially profiled all the time and followed in stores because they think that I'm stealing, I still love being Hispanic. And I would not trade it for the world. And we're not lazy people. That's all I gotta say. I love my culture. And I'm so proud of my culture because we are hard workers. And though there are struggles that come with being Hispanic, I love it. So that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Um, see, I told you I promised I wouldn't give you a six week gap again. My bad. Um, but yeah, please subscribe and like this video because the more you like this video, the more likely other people are to see this video, which is like great. Just like, you know, you want to make, you want to do something good today. You want to make someone's day or help a sister out. Like this video. That's literally all you got to do. Thank you. Peace out. Before you go though, there's something you must see. It's beautiful. It's my best friend, Lupita, when she was young. She decided to do a glam shot with her mother, and this is what we saw. Oh my.